now that all of that is done, uh, hopefully you received a wonderful email from myself with awesome videos of the youth and teen spaces from Managua. And so I am going to turn it over to Erica and Jen to introduce themselves and get rolling. So here we go. All right. Good morning, everyone. I'm um, Erica Dishinger. I am the Youth Services Coordinator here at Monaco Public Library. I've been here for almost four years, so um, still fairly new, but I have a little bit, a little experience now under my belt. So um, my background is in, I actually have a bachelor's degree in communication with an emphasis in public relations, and I also have an associate's degree in early childhood literacy and or early childhood education. And um, prior to coming over to the library, I was a teacher for Head Start for about two years. And um, I've also worked in various daycare facilities and um, I was an assistant three-year-old preschool teacher for a while. So I've got a lot of experience with the real little kids. Um, so I'm really happy that Jenny handles the teens. <laughs> um, and then one thing that I um, like to um, call myself, I guess you could say, or my niche here in the library is um, that I like to do really messy things. <laughs> so I call myself the messy librarian. Um, and some of my favorite programs, which I'll talk about in the presentation, have been a glow-in-the-dark party, which we did after hours during um, space-themed summer. Um, I did a Star Wars sensory day. I really, like I said, I like to get messy. I really like the sensory stuff coming from the early childhood background. And then this past summer, I did an ocean party at the park, which was really fun. So, and my favorite Christmas cookie. <laughs> I love sugar cookies. My mom has the best recipe ever. So um, I've started that tradition with my stepdaughter. We do a Christmas cookie ornament day every year. So that's this weekend. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so, all right. Um, so getting into my presentation here a little bit, um, I think the first slide is, um, Okay, what drives kids program planning? So my program planning, honestly, um, I kind of, I don't really have a system. <laughs> I, I kind of just go month to month based on what's going on seasonally, culturally, what my coworkers are doing. We like to piggyback off of each other quite a bit. Um, let's see, I also try to do things that are tied to literacy, STEAM and or free play and creativity. Um, and sometimes I just do things to get people into the library having fun or getting families together. A lot of times, um, kind of a, a goal of mine is to get the dads involved. <laughs> so it's really fun when I see when I see the whole family here together. Um, lately, I've been kind of trying to think about um, more intentional planning and things that have a deeper meaning or a deeper, deeper purpose. So um, now that I've gotten my feet wet in youth programming, I'm starting to go a little bit more above and beyond as far as like I said, the purpose of my programming. Um, programming goals, I aim to do one school age program per month in addition to my regular programs for younger kids. So I do um, story time, obviously, like most of you do. Um, I'm also been, I've also been doing tot time. Sometimes we do gym time in the winter um, for the little kids. And then for the school age kids, I've been doing my take and make bags during the pandemic. And then I also try to do kind of one special or niche thing um, each month, uh, which I'll get into. Um, how do I determine success? Attendance numbers, as I'm sure all of you um, can relate to for the end of the year report is always, we always just count heads. I don't have people sign in or anything like that. Um, but the most important thing, are the kids engaged, having fun, and are they learning something new? Um, and I don't really consider anything unsuccessful, even if I have one person show, one family. I've done story times to individual families and they just get a one-on-one -on -one experience with me. <laughs> so, and it's a lot more meaningful and special and personal that way too sometimes. So, And even if I don't have anyone show up, I've put it out there, I've tried it, and I've learned from that experience as well. Um, how do I share my work with my department, director, staff, library board, community? We here in at um, Manaqua in the library are constantly talking, which um, we have a really good uh, relationship, all of us on staff, and we communicate all the time, which I really love. Um, our desks are kind of situated so that we have to walk by each other all the time. <laughs> so that's really nice that, um, and I actually, um, I sit across from Jenny and um, a couple of our other part-time coworkers, and we're constantly brainstorming. And then also my director, Peg, 
um, does a little summary of what's going on each month um, as a part of her board report. Um, did any program or service surprise you? Um, so my first in-person program that I did kind of after, well, not after the pandemic, but during the pandemic, I guess you could say, um, this past fall, I did, or actually in October, I did solar system science. So um, we had a presenter come and talk about what's going on in outer space, did a short little video, and we went outside we actually went outside in the parking lot here at the library and they had set up um, the presenter and some of the his um, fellow volunteers set up some real actual um, working telescopes which was really cool so we got to look at jupiter and saturn through real telescopes so i had like 35 40 people come to that which surprised me a lot because i wasn't sure how people were going to react with the pandemic going on but luckily um, here in monaco we are um, very blessed to have a access to a community gym right across the hall from us. So um, we've been kind of doing some in-person stuff in there, but spaced out and trying to limit and ask that people wear masks. So that was really successful. Um, every year I, I do family fortnight, Wisconsin Science Festival, crafts, anything with paint are always popular. Um, some things that haven't worked very well for us here in Manaqua, any kind of virtual programming has been kind of a dud. And then um, before the pandemic, any kind of in-person after-school programming that I tried to do for the school-age kids, I always had really low attendance because it's, I'm sure as all of you can relate, it's really hard to find um, a time of the week, a time of the day um, that works for the kids. There's always something going on with the extracurricular curricular activities. Um, but kind of a way that we've discovered during the pandemic that we can reach those kids is through the Take and Make Bags. They're so wildly successful and popular. Um, what do I enjoy the most? I really like planning. I'm kind of planning geek. <laughs> I don't know. I like the challenge of coming up with new creative ideas. Um, like during the pandemic, we started kind of a mini library of things for the kids' room and teen, teen area. Um, I, I'll show you that in a little bit. And then just being in the moment with kids. I think if you work with kids or youth of any kind, you just really like being with kids. And um, I actually did talk time this morning and we danced to Christmas music and it just brought me so much joy. <laughs> um, the most challenging, um, obviously switching things up due to COVID and learning of the new technology. Um, both Jenny and I were a little nervous to present today because we're not used to all this stuff. <laughs> so thank you, Anne. Uh, and then burnout and busy schedule. Um, I just want to keep planning, planning, planning and doing, doing, doing. So I have a hard time saying no. And sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, what did I get myself into? <laughs> Um, and then, oh, no shows at programs. I'm sure we all relate to that too. Um, so here's our Monaco Public Library mission. I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but the part that I've highlighted is the part that I kind of um, gear my programming around, which is sparking curiosity in the real, real little guys, hoping that they love the library and continue to love the library. And then inspiring learning for those kind of older school age kids to come to the library and learn something new. Monaco Public Library values. Um, so I focus again on understanding the needs of the Lakeland community. For example, um, we don't have a lot going on for the real little kids here. Like there's just really nothing. We don't even have a Burger King with a ball pit or anything like that that they can do, especially in the winter time. So that's why I've offered um, tot time and gym time and some other things that I can mention in a little bit here. Um, my go-to collaborators, schools, daycares, local nonprofit agencies and businesses, and library patrons, a lot of the times I'm sure you guys can relate, um, a library patron will come up to us and say, hey, I just learned um, K-Yoga, kidding around yoga for kids. Can I come and teach yoga to some of the kids at story time? So um, that's actually how my solar system science program took shape is um, we had a guy came, who come up, came up to us and said, um, I'm trying to get this astronomy club together and I could do these programs for you. So um, that's been really kind of cool. And then, oh, sorry, what did the bottom of that other slide say? Oh, um, who I wish I could team up with. I would love to do story times as like community spotlight kind of thing where I go around to different businesses and um, like go to McDonald's and get a get a tour of what the fry machines look like, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not sure how possible that is or plausible, but 
I, it's a pipe dream, so <laughs> we'll see maybe someday. Um, here's a whole another list of my collaborators. Um, in the middle there is Alyssa doing yoga, the lady I was talking about before. Um, she's fantastic. And then the the picture to the left of Alyssa, that's Ann Moser from the Wisconsin Water Library. She, I found out about her somehow, and she does free programs, and she's amazing. Um, and then over on the right, maybe this is backwards for you guys, but <laughs> that's me doing story time at the fire station. Always a really popular one, a big hit. Um, successes, failures, things you want to try and things you want to try again. Take and make bags. Um, summer reading program. We have a huge summer reading program here in Manacla. We have a ton of tourists that come up. Um, and our numbers are always really big. And I think my biggest story time ever I had 100 people. <laughs> um, and we had a live owl, so of course. <laughs> Um, and then story time, tot time, gem time, anything for the little kids, like three and under, even five and under. It's, we just have that crowd here, a lot of stay-at-home moms. Um, failures, virtual anything, and like I talked about, after-school programs for school-age children, and Jenny can relate to that with the teens. Um, things I want to try, like I already said, the community spotlight story times, um, School age book club. I've kind of tried to do this and it's been a bust, but I'd love to do it someday if I can figure out how. Um, I'm kind of trying to do it a little bit right now with um, the after school groups. I can talk about that later, but it's kind of going okay. But <laughs> I'd like to do it here at the library too. Um, another thing that we would love to do together someday in our big gym that we have access to is some kind of a community dance. Super fun. Um, we're talking about partnering for a Harry Potter party. Um, Jenny's already done one with the previous children's librarian, but we can partner and do one again. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> and then um, more After Dark programs. I'd love to do some fandom challenges and something revolving around The Amazing Race because I love The Amazing Race. <laughs> um, things I'd like to try again. I tried a program this year that was a bust that no one attended because they it was supposed to be done at home. It was called the Storybook Pumpkin Patch. And I feel like if I did it in person that we'd have people come. And then um, I used to do Saturday story times, so if my schedule allows it, I'd like to do that again. Any kind of trivia in person, I've done the virtual trivia again, virtual, so it was a bust, but I had fun with it, so I think it'd be fun if people actually came to do it. And then the Taste of the Library, um, that's our pizza box program that I'll talk about a little bit here. How do I share my ideas? These are some flyers that I've made in Canva. Um, we're big Canva fans here. Um, newspaper, radio, chamber of commerce, email flyers to schools, um, the library's website, Facebook, Instagram, e-newsletter, we put up flyers in the library. And then a, kind of a cool new thing that I started doing during COVID was um, I've joined some Facebook groups myself personally, um, a local moms group, the MOPS group, and some homeschool groups, and I share our flyers to them too. All right, so going into my program. So I started with story time, top time, and gym time. Erica, what is MOPS? Can you tell me about MOPS? Oh, MOPS, um, Mothers of Preschoolers. So it's a local group of mothers with young kids or actually kids of any age. They get together once in a month and they have childcare and the kids play and the moms just talk about different like topics about what's going on in the community. Like I've gone to speak there. Um, they're just interested in resources in the community. They bring in guest speakers and they just basically talk and hang out and socialize. Support for moms. Yeah, yeah Jenny's been in it. Yeah. Yep. All right. So story times, like I said, I'm the mess librarian. So um, I try to plan my story times so that I'm not doing a craft at, at the end of every story time, but I rotate between um, doing some kind of a sensory project, um, some kind of free art or dramatic or large large movement play. So here's some pictures of examples of the messy stuff that I've done that I love. So a bubble machine, if you don't have one, get one. They love it. Um, Play-Doh, of course, obviously I make homemade Play-Doh. Shaving cream um, on the bottom uh, right there. Um, that's a jelly cake at Halloween. So when I was in school for early childhood education, I got to see a presentation by a lady called the Ooey Gooey Lady. And I got so many fun sensory ideas from her. Look her up on, on Google, the ooey gooey lady. And I got the jelly cake from her. It's basically just Knox gelatin. 
and you can put stuff in there. I've got spiders in there, and then you can put little pipettes in and like shoot colors through it, and it's really fun. Um, what's that top in there? <laughs> Oh, um, oh, paint snow painting. You just put some snow in a tub and get some watercolor paints and you can paint right on the snow. Super fun. And then the green stuff is Ublek, just cornstarch, water, green food coloring for Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Thank you. Um, more Play-Doh. I like to do Play-Doh with stuff. So like with buttons and with popsicle sticks and pipe cleaners, and then they can make little sculptures and things. Um, sand, any kind of sand or water. Um, and then outside we do the, every year I do the big bubbles, always a big hit outside or at the park, um, super easy to make. And I made those um, bubble wands myself with dowels and string and hot glue. Um, and then the bottom right, that's kind of a fun one that I tried this year for the first time where they had to search for the letters within the sand and then match them to the letter sheet that's on the ground there. They loved it. All right, um, free art. So with my background in early childhood, um, one thing that was emphasized to us is process over product. So I'm, I'm a fan of crafting, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I like to do free art. Um, so anything where they can just glue stuff on or just create ripped um, pages out of withdrawn books and glue them on or um, paint however they want to. Um, I do a lot of foam stickers. Pipe, um, pipe cleaners, pom-poms, eyeballs, and glue. We glue on pumpkins, we glue on paper, we glue on everything. Um, and then some little, cra I have a little bug there on the bottom right. Um, so sometimes we do do crafting things if it's for a specific purpose. Those were to go out in our garden. So I can, I'll talk about the garden, that's in a little bit. Some more art. Um, I try to kind of do things around my theme. So we've got, we had hat story time, they made crowns, we had mouse story time, they made mice out of cupcake liners. My favorite thing ever in the middle here, fly swatter painting. If you don't have fly swatters, get some fly <laughs> swatters. It's so fun. They love it. Um, and then we did um, moons using tin foil, so kind of a sensory arch type thing. Super fun. Okay, dramatic play. <laughs> I really get into dramatic play, so I like to bring in props from home and whatever we just have around the library or that my coworkers might have. Um, in the summer, I, I have been doing um, camping story time. So the top few pictures there are, we have a um, picnic table and I bring in my stepdaughter's old play food and we bring in a blanket and the, a couple of my coworkers have play tents and we set up a little campfire with sticks and cotton balls. And then I, I glue cotton balls on the sticks so it looks like they're roasting a marshmallow and I have a fish pond. Um, it's just fish that are cut out of construction paper with paper clips on and a string with a magnet at the end. Um, simple. Um, in the middle here, um, they're doing blocks and cars, so we put roads on the floor with tape. Always really fun. Um, on the bottom right, all that shredded paper, <laughs> which looks like a disaster, and it was kind of a pain to clean up, but I didn't really care because it was fun and they loved it. So that was Pets theme story time, and I have these sensory tubs, and we put the shredded paper in, and that, those were the kitty litter boxes. <laughs> and then we had um, I brought some stuff from home. I had like a, a self-feeding cat food thing that I put pom-poms in, super fun. And I brought stuffed animals and a couple of my coworkers brought collars and leashes for their dogs. So they had the collars on the dogs and we were dragging them around and they were brushing the kitties. And yeah, it was, <laughs> it was a fun disaster. <laughs> and then on the bottom right, um, the styrofoam, we had bought a bunch of furniture one year for the library and I saved some of the styrofoam and we did like a Santa's workshop right around Christmas and I had different stations and one of them was pounding golf tees into the styrofoam like they were elves, little elves working and super easy and fun and popular too. <laughs> um, for the summer that we did the music theme, I just did, I found like a random smorgasbord of instruments that I collected from coworkers, what we had on hand, put it all on the rug and they got to just roam around and try out a bunch of different instruments. Um, always fun outside parachute and beach balls. Um, and then the top left picture, um, I did a walking themed story time, which I wasn't sure if it was gonna go over, but it was like super fun. So I put um, a rope on the ground and they had pool noodles, like they were tightrope walking. And then they hopped through the hula hoops and weaved around the cones and climbed through the tunnels. And yeah, that was really well received. Sorry. Um, just a lot of building. This is in our gym. Um, 
a lot of building, a lot of blocks. I like different types of blocks, big blocks, foam blocks, cardboard blocks, wooden blocks, big Duplos. Um, I have some farm equipment, play toys that I brought from home. I had a blast with that. And special story times. I like to do special activities once in a while too, like around Christmas time. Um, I actually have a relationship with our local grocery store and um, they have a couple of mascot suits, <laughs> especially Christmas themed ones. So I borrowed the Frosty suit one year and we had Frosty the Snowman as a special guest. Um, we do a lot of planting. We have three garden beds behind our kids' room. We're very lucky and blessed with that. And um, we plant in the garden every year. I did a garden scavenger hunt one year. Um, this is us at the fire station doing a, a when we did story time outside at the park um, due to COVID, we did a little nature scavenger hunt. And then um, the top right is we have a puppet curtain that we use for lots of different things. So if you don't have one of those, um, we use it all the time. So I was using it as a fish pond here for fishing theme mm -hmm. story time. Um, virtual and outdoor story time, just a fun, a few fun pictures that were shared to me um, from parents of kids that had watched me on the TV doing story time. So I tried to kind of still make it interactive and like for rain story time, I had them wearing their rain gear and for winter story time, they dressed up in their winter gear. So it was really fun that the moms shared those pictures with me of their kids getting involved in me doing virtual story time. And then this past summer um, and into the fall, I did story time outside at our park. So these are just a few pictures of me doing story time. And I wanted to share this one on the bottom because it was really fun and really well received. I did box themed story time and the kids, I brought boxes and they sat in the boxes while they watched story time. So they, they loved it. Tell me about the microphone you're using in that picture. Oh, actually, that was one that you had posted on the YSIE Facebook group that you had recommended and we bought it. It was like a $35, $40 simple little headset with a little pack um, that you can attach with the cord or you can do it wirelessly and you can clip it onto your belts or you can stand it up on your table up by you or however. And it works great. It's fantastic. Have you used it um, anywhere like unexpected that you didn't think that you would need it? Not yet. I've mostly just been at the park, but it has been super helpful at the park because we have, it's like right next to the road and there's like semis that drive by and Oof. sometimes you can the town that comes through with the leaf blower and <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that'd be, um, that'd I tried be a problem. It. Yes. I tried using it in our gym, but actually I found I didn't need it because they could hear me just fine without it. So nice. Um, tot time and gym time. So tot time is a program that I've been offering kind of in place of our um, music garden that um, then got called Wiggle Giggle and Shake. Um, and that kind of got put on the back burner during COVID due to funding. So in place of that, I started up Talk Time, which we just do like a half hour of music and movement and then a half hour of free play at the end. And I just did that this morning. Like I said, it, it's fun. The kids really enjoy it. And it's mostly just to be social and get together and play and have fun. And I do a lot of free play um, with that. And like I said, um, in the winter, sometimes when there's not much to do, I offer gym time in the gym too. So it's basically just all these things you see, big blocks, tunnels, balls, hula hoops, mats, tumbling mats. We just put all the all the toys out and they just play and interact. So um, these are a few examples of story paths that I've done. Um, mostly I do them around Halloween. Um, so the first year we did this Halloween story path, um, which is the bottom left picture and then the bottom right picture. Um, we put little pumpkins on the floor and we had a path around the library and we had chairs with the pages they could go to and each page had a bucket of candy, which was really super fun and well received. And we had done it indoors because it's kind of cold at that time. But then with COVID the following year, we moved it outside and we have a sidewalk that goes right along our building. So we just did the same thing. We put the chairs alternating um, on either side of the sidewalk. And then I did the same thing again this year. Um, it's always really fun. And then we also have a partnership with our local winter park and they do, that's the one with the bunny on it. Yeah. They do a story along their snowshoeing path every year that we help provide for them. And then the year of COVID summer 2020, I did a story path um, with the downtown businesses. So that's those little girls looking at the door there. Summer reading program, I'm not gonna go into everything I do because <laughs> I do a lot of partnerships like we talked about before with local organizations and businesses. 
um, painting parties and um, live animals and that kind of stuff. But these are just some of the specialty type things that I personally have done. So the year that we had music theme, we did a Pete the Cat rockin' party. So um, I had a few stations for this. I made that, so on the top left, that Pete the Cat on the wall, I just made him out of butcher paper. And it was pin the button on Pete. So it was kind of like pin the tail on the donkey. Um, a couple of the Pete the Cat books have to do with cupcakes, I think. Or there's a game that has to do with cupcakes, maybe. So we made Play-Doh cupcakes. And as this little, you can see on this little girl, we made Pete the Cat hats. And I, had a, I happened to have a Pete the Cat like little photo booth stand thing. So I just put one of our Guitar Hero guitars and some sunglasses next to that and they take pictures. And then actually another station that I did that I didn't have pictures of was, um, <laughs> I just, I used, I think this is from one of our uh, paper rolls for book covers. Okay. And then I, I just put some blueberries and strawberries on it and I glued the shoe on and then they had to throw like the mud and the strawberries and the blueberries onto the ring toss. So that was another station. I just like to uh, use what we have in the library as much as I can. Um, let's see. Hey, I have oh, a question Windchime. for you. Oh, sure. The question is, where do you store all the big motor play stuff and your Pete the Cat <laughs> and the cupcake? To, I don't know. Where do you where do you store stuff and what are what's your organization there? Um, <laughs> we we have a lot of we're like blessed with a lot of closet space, but it's kind of all over the place. <laughs> um, all my like gym time equipment, my large motor play stuff um, in our gym, we have like a kitchen area that we have shelving. So all that stuff kind of goes in the kitchen. And then in our program room, we have a nice big closet that I've taken over. <laughs> and I've got boxes of um, jars and cotton balls and all that kind of junk in there. <laughs> you know? And then I also am blessed with a very large desk area. So I've got everything organized um, under my desk in boxes. Um, and then I've got all my flannels and you know, those like plastic things with three drawers and little wheels on them. So I've got like three of those that fit conveniently underneath my desk, like right kind of by my feet area. And I've got them all like winter flannels, spring flannels, summer flannels, all like organized like that, I guess. So I don't know, we just, we use a lot of boxes and totes. And we, we have shelves that go up to in the workroom so that we can have bins placed strategically so that things go up. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think we we're do. gonna need a picture of that, guys. We're gonna need a picture. Yeah, we can some pictures. Let me clean off my desk first. <laughs> so it might come a little bit later, but yeah, we try to utilize every little square inch we can, like even in our closet between the office and the program room where we store our tables and chairs. Like Jenny said, we've got some shelving that got installed like above where the tables go. And so yeah we we try to use laser space all right so hopefully that answered the question um the wind chimes was super easy and i think i had like 65 or 70 people come to this it was i just did hangers they could do a hanger or a stick with yarn and then for the little music makers at the bottom i got washers i went to the thrift store and bought a bunch of old silverware and then mason jar lids so and they could decorate them however they wanted with beads and string and stuff um, so music theme, rocks, blocks, and robots, I had to do something with rocks. I did a lot of stuff with rocks and then our robots, we have a couple of robots. So the bottom left picture, they could build little obstacle courses for the Sphero robot using rocks or blocks. And then the top picture, they're playing around with the uh, Azobots. And as you can see, I just had kind of stations where I just dumped out a bunch of Legos on the table or dumped out a bunch of the big blocks. and basically just a play day with those things. And then on the top right, um, the rock painting party. So they could paint their own individual small rocks, but then I had a big rock in the middle of each table that they worked on to paint as a group. And then they put MPL on them. And I went, I sprayed them with clear hairspray and I went and hid them around in the community and turned it into a rock hunt. So that's the middle picture. Um, they found the rock at one of the locations on the rock hunt. This, like I said, is one of my favorite things I've ever done. So this was the space theme summer, glow in the dark party. And it was literally a glow in the dark party. I borrowed a bunch of black, black lights from actually 
Jenny hooked me up with Manaqua Dance and they had some like really super powerful like stage glow lights or black lights. So we did a whole bunch of glow in the dark stuff and it was really super messy. So um, if you do this, um, use lots of tarps on the floor because I did glow in the dark slime as you can see in the middle there. And because it's in the dark, it's really hard to control where it goes. Um, but it worked out, it was fine, and it was a blast. Um, so I think to get all this stuff to glow, um, especially the food, the key was tonic water. I don't really remember how I got the slime to glow. I'd have to, I found all this stuff on Pinterest, so I'd have to look again. Um, but there are different things that interact with the glow lights. I think maybe lemon juice is one too. Um, and then I bought this like neon tape. So there's like a free art tape wall they could tape up their name or whatever. Um, I did hopscotch on the floor and I did bowling, which was just glow lights inside water bottles. They could get glow lights or um, glow sticks. And then we did puffy paint, glow in the dark puffy paint with like ketchup bottles. Um, again, I don't, I'm not quite sure how I did that. I'd have to look it up again. <laughs> and then, like I said, the food there, I did jello jigglers and, um, a punch bowl. And that was tonic water basically is what made it glow. Hmm. All right, um, so some more space theme things. Um, the top left, we bought a green screen this summer and we had a whole bunch of Star Wars props so they could put themselves in any kind of Star Wars galaxy that they wanted. And then I had them write a little story and like I took a video of them um, saying their little story in front of their backdrop. And then I posted those on our Facebook page. And then one of my other really fun favorite things I like to do is interactive movies. So the bottom right picture in the middle picture, um, we did interactive ET and a surprise that I had for the audience was that I had um, some real live actors prepared ahead of time, which was my coworkers kids. And they brought their bikes in and they rolled their bikes around the program room and they had the teddy bear in the basket like ET. It was so, oh my gosh, I loved it. It was so fun. They were really good sports. And then I had them walking in with the astronaut helmets or the lab guy helmets on and throughout different parts in the movie. And then of course, I obviously gave the audience the, the different props to use too. And then the bottom left, we always do a pizza or a end of the summer reading program party. And we usually have pizza from Papa Murphy's because of one of our coworkers. She has a connection there. And this is her son dressed up like cheesy <laughs> at the summer reading program party. Um, space camp. So this was, um, I always do some kind of a special story time in the summer where I do stations. And for this particular story time, um, I did space camp. So the stations were, I had a couple of crafts. So the top right, they could make out of um, toilet paper tubes, they could make like little space viewers. And then they made the helmets, which is the one below that out of um, paper grocery bags. <laughs> And then the bottom left, they did a sensory. They did um, moon rocks. So it was just baking soda and vinegar. They could put the vinegar on and the moon rocks would fizz. Um, the top left, Jenny loaned me some, she had some moon shoes so they could walk in the moon shoes. And then the top middle is my favorite. I had my husband, I commissioned him to make a space shuttle control panel. So he just used a cookie sheet and a box and then he like drilled holes and put like little lights and switches in there for me. And we had a little dr dramatic play center. I alone or I borrowed a little space suit from my friend. She happened to have a dramatic play astronaut suit. So that's the little girl in the middle there. And I always read a story at the beginning of these two. We got a um, comment, Erica, that says, I want to be a kid at her programs. <laughs> <laughs> and I agree. Well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so this was the fairy tale summer, the summer of COVID. <laughs> um, we couldn't really do much in-person programming, but we have this really nice reading garden patio area on the corner of our building. So I thought I could still have the kids come out to the patio and we could just do like this little obstacle course where they get wet and have fun. So I bought this rainbow sprinkler and I had, we happened to have this castle. So I made like a little, you walk through the sprinkler, walk through the castle, jump through the hula hoops, and then you walk through the bubble machines and I don't even remember what I called it. It was just kind of like a sensory walk, but they got really wet and loved the sprinkler. And it was almost kind of like they got to go swimming at the library. So they had a blast. Um, fairy gardens. So um, the picture on the right, I did this as a take and make bag. 
um, so they could pick up all the supplies at the library. And then I did a video of myself making the fairy garden so they could then click on the link to that and make the fairy garden along with me at home. And they turned out super cute. So that's the little girl with her fairy garden. I did like a chalk fest on the sidewalk outside of the building. And then on the bottom right, this is some people or some girls watching me, my presentation, doing the fairy gardens and making the fairy gardens along with me. Um, on top of that is just a presentation of my very first ever take room make bags during summer of 2020 with my castle background in the kids room. Uh, and then 2021, so this past summer for Tales and Tales Animal Theme, I did an ocean themed week, which I can use again this year. <laughs> um, so I had um, out at the park, I had my special um, story time where I read a book and then we did the stations and I did an obstacle course, as you can see, um, I don't know if you can circle this, the chairs up there. So they had to like dolphin hop over the pool noodles and then one here, they, I bought a squirter. They had to squirt the chair that had like a picture of a shark on it that I laminated. And then they had hula hoops that had starfish on them. They had the starfish hop. And at the very end, I had an actual working sprinkler that all the kids avoided, of course, <laughs> but it was still there. Um, and then we did the parachute and beach balls. We did the bubble machines and music. We did a fish pond, which is this big picture on the left where I laminated a bunch of fish and cut them out and put paper clips on. And then I brought an actual pool, filled it with a little water. And then they had the fishing pole with a, a really, really strong like industrial magnet on the end. And then the top right was um, right inside. So the grassy area was right outside of the, the pavilion. And then like right inside the pavilion, they could do watercolor painting. And I had popsicles. Oh, more from 2021. So um, I was talking about Alyssa earlier who um, learned or was certified in K-Yoga. So I hooked up with her this past summer. We did some yoga in the park. That's um, There's a couple pictures of yoga there. Um, a painting party with our local earth goods. Um, pottery painting place. Um, on the bottom left is a virtual program of Miss Jamie's Farm, and that's actually my little guy watching it at my house. <laughs> um, he loved it, had a blast, clapped along. And then the top um, middle, we did virtual reading to the therapy dog. I had a couple people attend. It wasn't very well received, but it was really fun. I had someone from Canada. <laughs> that was really cool. Um, and then I did a take and make Play-Doh snake challenge where they whoever built the longest snake would win a prize and these boys just got super into it they were like looking at the books for the actual pictures and trying to mimic the pictures which was really cool and these boys were like older boys too it was super popular um on the top left that's actually my nephew um i did a virtual pet show so they could send in pictures of their, of their pets and i put them in this neat little um format and we shared those on facebook um, more take and make bags from 2021 um, there's my, I did interactive Finding Nemo on the top there. On the left, this girl sent a picture of the jellyfish she made, which was like a little puppet. You can move the jellyfish around. On the bottom right, we did um, birdhouses out of juice jugs. And then on the top right, I did a salamander hunt in our garden where I basically just stuck them around in the garden with toothpicks. I laminated them, cut them out. Um, and then I had a sheet they could go off of where they had to circle them. And then the, the one to the left of that, I did a safari hunt on our local walking trail. So this is at the beginning of the trail, the animals they had to find. And then as they walked along the trail, I had the animals laminated with like a little fun fact about each animal at the bottom. And they could find them as they walked, which was super popular with the adults too, actually, to be honest. I had a ton of people attend that. And I counted my attendance because at the very end, I had like a big Ziploc bag with like a piece of cardstock in and a pen. And I asked them to sign in at the end, which I'm sure I didn't capture everyone, but I had like, I don't know, like 60 people or something sign that piece of paper. And it lasted through the rain because it was in that plastic bag. So, all right, I'm gonna take a little breath. <laughs> and then we'll go on to passive programs. Oh, yeah. It, it is about 142, and we have <gasps> answered our questions along the way. But I want to know who does all the laminating? You, or do you have like a helper? 
Um, it's all me mostly. <laughs> well, whoever you know, like I would laminate my own stuff. Jenny laminates her own stuff, that kind of thing. I just have one comment is one, a couple of words that I keep hearing are connection or found or had, you know, it's, yeah. so I just am hearing a lot of creativity and improvisation. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We definitely like to use what we have and pick each other's brains. <laughs> okay. So are we ready for passive programs? <laughs> I think I just have like two more sections. I'll try to be really quick. I'm talking really fast, though. <laughs> I have a lot. Okay, passive programs. So um, let's see. I like to do crafting in the kids' room. This was this is all pre-COVID, um, where I just set things. Um, I set things out, and then the kids can come make them on their own time, like the little snowman guys, and then I hang them up. And I like to put like things in this type of a thing, where I've got you know tampons and um, ribbon and googly eyes and all that kind of stuff and then they can just have free reign with it and I put glue sticks and um, sometimes it's a huge mess but usually they're pretty pretty um, good about it so we we'd make the snowman and I hang them up we do different things I'll will be pictures later on here um, I do reading challenges um, like the turkey bingo I just printed out a turkey and wrote different things on they had the color in each feather um, I do, I like the big um, post-it note pages, like the big um, sheets of paper with the sticky and then I just put them like, either on the table or on the wall and I put some markers out with a question that they have to answer, like the Black History Month thing. Um, Walk It in the Pocket is a craft that we did for Dr. Seuss. Um, those were super cute. And then on the right, the gingerbread men, um, I made those based on book characters and they had to guess the book character. Um, Football time in the fall in September, I did a book bracket one year, which was really fun. And the winner, of course, was Harry Potter. <laughs> um, poetry station, to the left of that, I cut out words from magazines and they glued them on the paper and made little poems. I like to do scavenger hunts in the kids' room. So there's the rock hunt. I had a rock hiding around and they had to um, write down where they found it each week. Um, another craft on the bottom there, Mother's Day flowers. Um, and then, yeah, that's more of the, so they could take a, each week I had a different sheet for the book bracket, the football type thing, and they had to circle and leave their, their sheets, and then I compiled all the, the answers each week. Um, I have to check out the Halloween scratch. Oh, the, yeah, um, that's another reading challenge that I've done. This was the second year I've done it now, where I give out, like, almost a little scratch-off coupons for around Halloween time. I call it the Great Pumpkin Reading Challenge, and they read. 20 minutes a day for a month and scratch off every day they read. And then they can take those to the local grocery store, which I have a partnership with, um, and receive a free pumpkin. Um, wink, wink, my husband is the produce manager there. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> um, more passive stuff. I love Mad Libs. So those are some leprechaun Mad Libs we've done. Um, uh, Dr. Seuss reading challenge where they had to like read in the bathtub and read to their cats and different <laughs> silly things like that. Um, the I Spy Fish Tank was one of the coolest things that my coworker Karen and I came up with. Loved it. it super fun. Um, another big post-it note that they could write on fit, um, finish the poem. So we got some funny responses to that. And then I put out a giant piece of cardboard, like stiff, thick, um, heavy cardboard and a bunch of bottle caps and they glued them on for um, around Earth Day, April. And then we're gonna, the plan is to hang it in the kids' room too. Um, yeah, some more examples. We, we do a winter reading challenge. We just started doing that a couple years ago. Um, the mummies, that's another thing that they make and we hang up in the kids' room, kind of like the snowmen. Um, let's see, I've already kind of talked about most of these things. The photo booths, we do photo booths all the time here. We love photo booths. So that's another thing we use the puppet curtain for. We usually put that kind of out in our lobby area. Uh, more passive stuff, the summer where it was space themed, I did the Star Wars I Spy with my Jedi Eye and I had these little guys hidden all around the kids room and then they had to spell out a phrase because each one had a letter on it. Um, oh, and another really fun thing I did, my one of my cohorts had a real actual mailbox. So she brought that in and they could write letters to their librarian during the National, Nano Remo National, 
novel writing month. <laughs> and then I wrote, I taped them on the wall and I wrote responses to the kids. All right, take and make bags, um, 2020. So in 2020, I did my take and make bags. Um, I did them based on storybook worlds. So every month I did a different storybook world. So I did Neverland one month, I did Camp Half-Blood, I did 100 Acre Woods. Um, so these are just some, some examples. So each bag had a craft, an activity, a snack, and a recipe in it. So Harry Potter, they made, um, oh my gosh, snitch. golden snitch <laughs> ornaments. <laughs> yes, um, super easy. Um, I have examples of all these things that I can show at the end of there's time. Um, let's see, I made, they for Neverland, they made little crocodile clothespin magnets that you put on the fridge to hold like pictures up or paper. They made a half blood mm -hmm. necklace with beads that they could paint on the beads, um, something significant from every year. And then the Winnie the Poohs, they did little um, honey pot flower, honey pot um, flowers that they could grow, sunflowers. Um, Narnia, we did snow globes and, oh my gosh, what do you call these things? Fortune teller thingies. Mm -hmm. I found that on, on Pinterest. Um, Wonka, I, I put a little Play-Doh pot in each one and I gave them some buttons and beads and pipe cleaners and they had to design their own candy. <laughs> and then when they sent me the picture of the candy, that's the bottom right, I put it into the Wonka Vision television <laughs> screen and they told me the name of their candy and I put those on Facebook. And then I also put a photo prop in there where they could turn themselves into Oompa Loompas with the Oompa Loompa hair. And then I took their faces and put them on the Oompa Loompa bodies. <laughs> and I put those on our Facebook page too. Um, oh, Whoville, we did um, we did the Horton's Clover. And then I gave, I found these little mini magnifying glasses on Oriental Trading or something. And then I, I actually did like a, like an ice spy picture and I put like a little mini who guy in there and they had to find the who. Um, I just, that oh, is so I, cool. And I want one for my birthday. <laughs> that sounds so awesome. How, so you use your computer a lot to add the little bits and bobs into things. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's going back to the technology part I talked about earlier. I've learned a lot. I'm sure everyone else has too. Um, okay, Alice in Wonderland, we made these little pencil guys that are supposed to be like the picture below, those little pencil guys. Um, and then McGregor's Garden, they did like a watering can out of a cup and they put foam stickers on them, foam stickers, love them. And then they actually got to, I put, I don't know if I put dirt, I think I put dirt and seeds and they could plant a plant in their little watering can too. All right, take and make bags this year, so far this year I've done I've done them a little bit differently because the having the four different things in each bag that I did in 2020 was a lot of work. So I simplified things this year and I'm just doing crafts in the bags and I'm doing based on things we have on hand. So we had a bunch of pencils. So in September, we did the sloth pencil holder. In October, we had all these puzzles that were missing pieces, um, the big floor puzzles. So I made them, we made them into monster magnets. And then in November, we did the CDs and yarn weaving because we have a whole bunch of CDs from like old audiobooks. And then we had a local um, crafting group donate a bunch of yarn to us. School year programs. Oh my gosh, I'm going way over. I'm sorry. You're good. Okay. Um, escape room. I have a bunch, I have a whole, my whole escape room box with me if anyone wants to see any of the props that I used. But I bought a bunch of props and I designed this escape room after like a children's librarian type setup, like an office. And we, Jenny and I went to Rhinelander and shadowed an escape room there. And then I kind of just got the ideas and created my own thing off of that. And um, we had a local 4-H group that came in and did it. So that was kind of fun. They had a really good time. And um, I think two or three groups did it and everyone was successful. And I got to make um, invisible ink, which is me at the bottom. <laughs> and then I did some stuff with sign language and I did the lock boxes and I did stuff with like, um, like they had to find the key in the puppet's mouth and um, put together the puzzle to create the clue. Um, so I mentioned at the beginning, one of my favorite programs was Star Wars Sensory Day. So this is a vision that I had since I got this job that I wanted to do because I love sensory. So I took a whole bunch of different sensory and I made stations and we happened to do this program on May the 4th. So <laughs> I tied it in with Star Wars too. 
So every little sensory thing I gave like a Star Wars name, like um, you can circle her. This little girl here, um, it's just dyed spaghetti that's dyed brown and we called it Wookiee hair. And she actually dressed up like a Wookiee too. So it was really fun. Um, so I, those are all the names at the top of my different stations. And it was basically just like Ooblek, um, Bubbles, Play-Doh, Slime, Getty. I can, if anyone wants to know all the stations, I can look into that further because I don't know them all off the top of my head. But, and then on the big screen, I had the, you know, the beginning of Star Wars with all the stars that go like this. And I had the music on a loop and it was really fun. New Year's Eve party, I've done two of these in person and I've done one as a take and make bag. And I always do some kind of minute to win it games. And we usually have the dads come to this and get really involved. They love doing the rubber bands where you knock down the soda cans. <laughs> <laughs> so I do the minute to win it games. I do some kind of a craft, which I have an example of. I can show you at the end if there's time. Um, and then we do a time capsule and then at the end, of the program like 15 minutes before it ends i have everyone get together and that's on the next page um, at the top right here i have everyone get together and i stand up on a chair and we do a countdown and then they release the poppers that they made or throw the balloons up and i take a picture uh, oh here's some examples of my or pictures of um, crafts that i've done in the time capsule oh and there's always a photo booth too i think there might be more pictures oh no um so gingerbread houses, this will be the second year this year that I've done gingerbread houses. And I do these as take and make bag. And last year I gave out 60 of them and I've already um, created my second batch for this year. I did a batch of 30 that went like that. And I just made some more yesterday. So I'm sure I will get 60 more this year. And a tip uh, where you get your pop tarts. I get everything for this program from the Dollar Tree. Yeah, and I put a whole box of pop tarts in the bag. And um, we get the little jars of frosting and we split them out um, in like half, so into two little Ziplocs, half and half. And then they can basically cut the tip off the Ziploc and use it like a piping bag. Um, and then we do a contest, they send us their pictures and we put them on Facebook and then who, you know, whoever gets the most votes gets a prize. And they love it. Um, another annual program that I've done for three years before COVID, haven't done this since COVID, is Family Fortnite. So we put out, I, they come in, I read a story, we put out all the building supplies, um, they build their fort, and then one year we did it as a contest. Um, another year, we, we always kind of add or do something different every year. Um, there's a, more pictures on the next slide where another year we added like the big boxes because we got all that furniture and they can name their fort. Um, and then they basically, I have a cart of books, they can pick a book off the cart and then go in the fort with their family and read the books with flashlights. And they love it. And it's super cool what they come up with. Wisconsin Science Festival. We've done this every year since I've worked here. It's been different during COVID, but before COVID, we always used to do, Jenny and I would partner up and we'd do simple science stations so they could go around to the different stations and do different experiments. Um, slime, making lava lamps. Um, we did like a static thing with tissue paper and balloons. Um, Jenny did, oh no, this the red carpet, that's, they made catapults out of um, popsicle sticks and then they could launch their pom-poms and we had this red carpet left over from something and they could mark how far their pom-pom went. Um, this is another year I did, oh, the first year I did sink or float. The second year I did um, on those paper plates, what dissolves and what doesn't. So they had different materials they could put in the water. I did glow or um, color changing slime. And this was super easy. There was just some kind of a pigment that I bought on Amazon and it was really cheap. I don't remember what it's called. But I can look into it if anyone wants to know. And you just put the pigment in and it, it's color changing. It's really fun. Super cool. Um, and then we did, what else did we do? Oh, we did the bubbles and slime, of course, the color changing slime. Um, and then um, the first year of COVID, we went outside to the park pavilion and we did on the right here, we did raptors and readers. So I read a story and then our local wildlife center brought in a bird, a raptor, and actually a couple of them talked about birds. And then this past year, this past October, as I talked about, we partnered with the local astronomy club and did the solar system science. So these are kids actually out in our parking lot looking at Jupiter and Saturn with real telescopes. And I got to see Jupiter and Saturn and it was so cool. <laughs> Um, the Polar Express, I got this idea from Jenny from, because she used to work at Montessori and you did this here, right? Or did yep. this there. Um, so this was kind of an interactive movie I did around Christmas time where 
I didn't give them like the bag of props, but at the beginning they got to decorate a box to look like a train car. And I got all these boxes courtesy of my husband at Save More, <laughs> um, the produce guy. And they got to decorate their box like a train car. And then they sat in their box during the movie, which is them up here. And then at the end of the movie, we did a little parade through the library. Um, and I did a little video of them. And also during the movie, they had a ticket. They got to come up and I, I punched their ticket for them. Um, I do all kinds of, we have a maker cart, so I out do all kinds of cardboard challenges and maker nights. So these are just some really cool things people have built during the maker nights. I like this picture of the two older boys in particular who were getting into it and having fun and having a sword fight in the library. <laughs> and then this guy up here made an actual working windmill. And then over here on the left, this is actually my husband and my stepdaughter, and they made this really cool Lego guy. Um, okay, so COVID 2020, I did, um, going off of my New Year's party in a bag, I did something for spring break that I called the spring break luau party in a bag. And again, I used my produce connections to my husband and I got um, 30 coconuts donated. <laughs> so each bag had an actual real coconut in it, which was super cool because a lot of people don't even know how to open a coconut. So it was like a learning thing for the kids. And they had a craft in there. They could make the tiki masks and they could make the luau's out of um, cupcake liners. And I had some minute to win it games they could do in there. And um, oh, they could paint a seashell and make a seashell necklace like Moana too. <laughs> and photo crops always. Um, these are some paint type things that I've done. Summer reading program. This is a cool thing every year. Um, I have the, in May, I have the kids either come in in person or we did it as a take and make bag in 2020 and 2021. And they make crafts and art that we can hang in the kids' room during the summer as decorations that go with the theme. So this picture on the left is the four different crafts that they did for Tales and Tales, and we had one available each week. Um, so a couple, um, oh, this, this one right here with the guitars was an in-person one for the summer we did the rock theme and they did decorated CDs and guitars and sheet music. Um, and then I did a play with paint day one, one year during spring break where I just put out a whole bunch of different supplies, brushes, I put the fly swatters out, sponges, different things and they could just play with paint and have fun. And then the Easter art is the Easter eggs. Um, I had a couple different projects or ways that they could make the Easter eggs and then we laminated and cut them all out and there were like 60 of them and then we hung them outside in our tree in front of the library so that was cool. Um, the peep dioramas were super easy I just put a bunch of stuff I collected like 30 shoe boxes and then just put a bunch of stuff in the shoe boxes and they got to um, build a scene based around a story so these are a couple examples we got in that was super fun. There's my flyer for it. Um, Steam Kids and Lego Challenges, always super popular. The Lego Challenges, I have little cards that they have to um, create the challenge using Legos. So that's the bottom middle. And then Clean Kids is a thing I tried to do after school for kids, but I've only gotten a, a few kids every time. Um, so we did different, like we did science, we did technology, we did um, engineering, you know, each letter of Steam. So. Um, you know, doing the robots through the chair. Um, we did a candy stacking thing. We did a thing where they got to make their bats fly by blowing in a straw. And then we did, actually, that was the first time I ever did the gingerbread houses. Um, okay, so some things we did in 2020 during COVID. Um, before COVID hit, I did an in-person, my very first ever in-person therapy dog reading session, Tales for Tales. Um, during COVID, um, we did a build a snowman bag. It's kind of a special thing where they could get all the supplies to create an actual snowman outside in their yard. Like I cut out a zillion felt scarves. And <laughs> I bought these felt hats from Oriental Trading, put them all in a take and make bag. Um, random and ridiculous book bingo. This was just an idea that came out of my brain. And it was super fun and easy. And I wish more people would have attended. I want to do this one in person. So I just went through every section of the kids room and I pulled like 20 easy readers and 20 chapter books and 20 picture books, all that had like really weird titles. And I put them in a box and then um, I generated bingo cards based around the titles of these books. There was like a free online bingo generator. And then the kids could either download their bingo card or come in and get a bingo card. And then I connected with them virtually. 
And instead of pulling the balls out of the cage, I pulled the books out of the box, and then they just checked off the books on their sheet, and then they got a prize for each round. So like, for example, um, there's the easy readers, the mac and cheese easy readers with the cat. And um, so the winner for the easy reader round got a box of mac and cheese. <laughs> they loved it though, it was super fun. Um, the taste of the library, that's the one here and then the one up here and the middle. Um, this was a brainstorm collaboration between Jenny and another Corker and I, where we got inspired by the Rhinelander Library doing the book subscription boxes. And we thought we can do that for kids' books the kids books are like so big and flat and Jenny thought why not put them in a pizza box and then Karen's husband um, is the manager or owner of Papa Murphy's so we made a book menu so they could request books based on these different things interest age choose your own toppings book type that kind of thing and then we put everything in the pizza box and we put Papa Murphy's bookmarks in where they could um, check off when they read and get a free pizza. I put like pizza scented stickers in there. Um, and then we put, I put little slices of pizza that had, that said, do you like Carmen Wilson? Try a, a taste of, and then a, a, a recommendation. Um, and then one more thing in the bottom right, um, reusing stuff. Um, we had a whole bunch of audiobook cases. So we, we turned them into a take and make little scrapbook. And we used um, the CDs to you can cut, actually cut CDs with scissors and we glue them on the front to make like a mosaic. So we included the CDs and the audiobook covers. And then my last school section, outreach. Um, so I go to the daycares in the schools during the school year and do outreach. But during the summer, a kind of a cool, unique thing that we've been doing for a few years now is that I do outreach to the daycares and they also participate in the summer reading program. So I make like a a poster for each classroom and it's got like almost like a Candyland track on it. So every day that they read 20 minutes together as a classroom, they can put a sticker on and then I come out to the daycares and give them prizes through the different uh, once they reach the different prize points. So these are some of the classrooms holding their prizes. I've given up kickballs, a bag of books for each classroom, um, a treat like a fruit snack for each kid, um, that kind of thing. And then this is something new that I'm trying this year. Um, I thought instead of having the kids come here because they don't seem to come here um, in person because of all their extracurricular activities, I thought I could go to the daycares and reach the after school programs. And I'm doing kind of a book club based on the sideways stories of Wayside School. So I read chapters to them like while they're having their snack, when they first get off the bus, and then we do an activity. So they're doing a, a thing where they have to because the Wayside School has 30 stories, so they're, it's a challenge to see if they can stack these different things 30, 30 stories high. So it's been, it's gone over pretty well. Um, there are definitely some things I'd like to tweak for future, but something new I'm trying this year. So, oh my gosh, that was a lot for me. I'm sorry if it were one new, and I hope I didn't talk too fast and worry you too much. But if, if there's time at the end, I have a bunch of props and things that I'd like to show too. So, but I've already gone way over my time. <laughs> so I'm going to turn it over to Jenny. <laughs> awesome. Do you have any questions? <laughs> Nothing so far, but I do want to ask people to start thinking about something they might like to try after today. And I would love to hear in the chat, if you type it into the chat, if there's something that you're super excited to try. Uh, one thing okay. from the youth section with Erica and one thing from the teen section. So off to you, cool. Jen. Yeah. Okay. I want to hear what people want to do. <laughs> awesome. So I am Jen Davis and I have been, or I will have been at the library here in Minocqua eight years. In um, being at the library, I worked at the North Country Montessori Preschool here with preschool age kids and school age kids after school. And prior to that, I worked as a paper arts instructor at our local scrapbook store, which is no longer in business here. So I have lots of crafting experience on top of working with kids um, and being familiar with a lot of the families in our community already. Um, currently, I work part time at the library and then I also create scrapbooking projects for companies um, for scrapbooking companies right now. too. So that's kind of fun. Um, some of my duties as a teen librarian include. Purchasing books, sourcing books, cataloging the teen and children's books. Um, I'm responsible for the teen programming, like Erica with the kids, assisting in community service opportunities, publicity. Uh, we both are responsible for doing that and the creation of our flyers and posters. 
we need to do it individually as well. Um, the cleaning up and tidying of the teen room and creating displays. And I am also in charge of the library's social media accounts, primarily Facebook and Instagram, as well as the library's website. I will on occasion work with our outreach coordinator, Kelly, also to come up with adult programming and some of which include a holiday crafting series, which was really successful last year, but it burnt me out incredibly. So we're not doing that again this year, but it was amazing. I mean, people kept coming in wanting more. Um, and then also now I am just starting up a monthly scrapbooking crop, which is basically a little gathering once a month where people <laughs> come in and scrapbook and Erica likes to scrapbook too. So <laughs> we are, we are happy about that. Um, my all time favorite library program for teens would have to be either our Harry Potter party that I had um, when uh, the different children's librarian who's here on staff prior to Erica, um, one of our zombie bashes, each one was a blast, um, or our naturally made program, which was a partnership between the Northwoods Discovery Center in Manitouche Waters. Um, we had the naturalists come in and I'll talk more about that, but we had um, a little learning session and then we made lip balms and different things. Um, let's see, I feel that I bring a sense of inclusiveness to my position here at the library and foster community. Um, prior to my position here, we didn't have a teen librarian. So it was kind of fun for me to start um, brand new with a fresh slate. There had been a gap between the prior teen gal and myself. Um, and so a lot of the staff at that time weren't really comfortable with teens making noise or rearranging furniture or being loud or visible in the library, it felt. So I kind of have felt like I've been good at working hard to make sure that teens know that the library is a space for them. And my staff right now, or the staff at the library is amazing with the kids and they've been so supportive and it's exciting to see. Um, my creativity is something that I use every day at the library and that in addition to working with our area's youth is what really brings me joy here at the library. Yes, we're gonna <laughs> give the mouse to Erica so she can <laughs> go on to the next slide. Okay, what drives my teen programming? Um, I look at the time of the year, the holidays, community needs, school functions. Um, I look at what the teens are telling me. I look at social media. Um, I do have a teenager myself, so I am privileged, I guess, to get to see sometimes what her peers are, are sharing online. Um, supplies the, libraries have, the library has on hand. Donations, I'm always seeking donations or looking at what we have that has been brought in and try to use something that I see, um, if I see a need in the tween or teen community, I try to fill it. We do have a couple kids that come in um, that have nowhere else to go after school. And so I will kind of tap into, hey, what are you into? And we'll figure something out to maybe help them or their friends come in and have something to do. Um, outreach is something that is kind of somewhat limited. I work with the high school, I work uh, with the two grade schools and there's some area businesses that I work with. Outreach is hard um, just because there's so many after school activities already going on and happening. And then the uh, location that we are, we have such a diverse and broad spectrum of like where kids are coming from or to that it's hard to get them in the building sometimes, but we do our best. Um, let's see, teen program goals. I try to have at least one to two meaningful programs per month. Um, this could be a mix of virtual, in-person, passive, or a DIY bag type of program. And I try to reach teens where they're already at in the community. So schools, um, I try to put my signage, my flyers, where it would be relevant, where they would be already and see it. Uh, newsletters, I, yeah, we just started the newsletter, I think, what, two years ago now? Yeah. And, and a lot of families, we get parents that will share with their kids what's going on at the library, that's awesome. And then I also reach out to the schools to have our programs go out in their newsletters as well or on their um, library website pages, which is awesome. And social media, of course, I try to reach them through Instagram. It seems like that is the most uh, beneficial social media account that we have been using. We are toying with using TikTok, um, but I'm not fully engaged there yet. <laughs> I try to use resources or supplies that the library has on hand. I look at our donations, as I said before, and craft cupboards and plan around that. Um, the teen 
library doesn't really have a specific set budget that is just mine. So anything that I do, I go to the adult or outreach coordinator and to peg our director and I run it by them before making any purchases. Um, so I'm really creative and crafty with using what we already have because I don't want to put a stress on their budget as well. Um, I try to ensure that my program or project idea is relevant to my audience. Uh, on social media, I noticed an area um, where teens are posting about anime arts, which led me to start an anime club just most recently. I think we are, we've had three meetings so far and it's been amazing. It's been my first successful program um, after our shutdown of COVID. So our in-person programming, I had no teens that told me they were interested in it um, in person, but I, I posted about it online. I tried it out and we've had um, more numbers each time and it's, 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 it's so exciting. <laughs> Um, so I won't read the mission, but again, Erica was concentrating on sparking curiosity and inspiring learning with her little ones. I feel like for the teens, it's all about creating connections and that's really exciting to focus on. They need a place to be heard and seen and to feel that they can go. Um, our values are opportunity, hospitality, and stewardship. They are our top priority. They have a special place. All right, so my community collaborators. Um, again, local schools, local craft stores, local environmental centers, facilities, we have lots of them around us. Uh, community members that wish to share their experiences and specialties, that is an awesome resource. Uh, local stores, donations of goods for programs in person and for DIY bags. And then here's a more comprehensive list of our collaborators. Um, something or some individuals that I would love to work with someday. Uh, we have a local health food store called the Wildberry Market. They do lots of little programs. It would be kind of fun to have them here, maybe healthy snacks, or they do stuff with essential oils or natural basket making. I mean, we could tap into a lot of resources, I feel like there. Um, we also have a holistic health and healing center. They do meditation, um, yoga, again, essential oils, things like that, um, kind of natural health based. And then Northwood Zipline would be fun. I'm not sure exactly how that would work, um, but I, it would be fun to do a field trip, I think, <laughs> in the summer. And then the Journey Club at the high school has a climbing wall. And I always thought that would be kind of fun to work something out with them. Success. Um, success for me when I have a program sometimes has to be just great if I reach one team. <laughs> so if I if I reached someone, if they showed up, um, if they were engaged, if they stuck around, if they did the thing, were they comfortable? Were they happy? Were they able to be themselves? That is success to me. Um, I feel like it's a success even if I reach just one individual. I maintain that the goal is to continue reaching out and sharing and sharing and letting people know that there is a place for them here at this library. For sharing, uh, I share with my coworkers. We are a just awesome group of gals that bounce off ideas off of one another all the time, um, especially Erica. Um, our outreach coordinator, Kelly, is someone that I work with as well. Um, we share posters, websites, social media, uh, Facebook groups like Erica as well. Everything that I kind of already mentioned. <laughs> uh, sampling of my in-person teen programs coming up next. Uh, one that was really fun, you can keep that actually down, perfect, uh, was a Stranger Things program, it was super fun. We had, um, I had Christmas lights, I used our big whiteboard that's on an easel to write the alphabet, and if you're familiar with Stranger Things at all, um, they have a light communication board <laughs> that Will uses in the show, so that was just kind of a fun little prop, um, photo background. I laminated different images that seemed relevant for Stranger Things. What about Barb? Put them on uh, little dowels. Kids love getting their pictures taken. <laughs> so that's what I've discovered with the teens. And then we share it on our Instagram pages or Facebook, and then they can reshare it. All right. And we also had for the Stranger Things, we had a waffle bar um, with toppings. So I had, I, and then to make it a little extra special, um, I think teens kind of often get missed in the, the fun, cutesy kind of stuff. So I try to make everything seem a little bit like a party because it makes it feel like it was 
thoughtfully put together for just for them. Um, so I printed off like little Stranger Things labels for the water bottles. Um, some of them said the upside down and I had the water bottles sitting upside down. It was kind of cute. I uh, covered the juice bottles with the Stranger Things logo. Just something a little extra special. Um, something that is used often is disposable or plastic tablecloths. I get a ton of them at the dollar store. I use them for food, for messy projects. Sometimes we get to keep them because we don't wreck them, but if we wreck them, they can just get tossed and it's easy to clean up. Uh, we have a toaster oven. We did the Eggo waffles, which is part of Stranger Things. Um, I printed off some templates for characters from the Stranger Things show, and then kids use the perler beads to make those little guys. And then I printed a whole bunch of waffle images and I had Mod Podge and they put it on CDs, which we have an abundance of here at the library and they made coasters. So they have little waffle coasters. And then there's a picture of my little display of their photo props that they could use. Um, zombie bash, we've had a couple of these. We've had a zombie walk, we've had a zombie bash. Um, I think there's been a couple more zombie bashes but each one has been awesome. Um, we have minute to win it games, just galore. We have the program room set up with tables and they do all sorts of crazy, silly things that are messy or challenging. Um, we set up the food. Again, I do little fun printouts that I put on the sodas and make it a little extra special. Um, I, I have a whole bunch of stuff from like birthday parties and stuff in the past, like I have old, photo frames that I got at the dollar store that I put like earwax for the, mush the marshmallows and butterscotch on a, on a stick that just make it a little fun and extra special. Uh, we of course have photo ops. Um, we have outside pictures here. We have kids that meet up um, at the high school. This was kind of a group effort of the high school and the library. They got ready at the high school and then they walk downtown to the library as zombies. So that's kind of exciting. They get here and then they can have food and then the minute to minute games and then more, more uh, prizes and photo opportunities. <laughs> so here's just kind of a sampling of some of the things that have happened. You could, I think there's a couple more. Whoops. There we go, zombie fingers. Oh, and then we had uh, food donations for the Lakeland Sharing Foundation. That's how they could get in. Uh, no big deal if they forgot, <laughs> but yeah, dollar store prizes. We had Jello brains, um, and zombie fingers, the eyeballs, and the donuts. And then we had pizza as well. That I think was, oh, what did I call that? Roadkill, <laughs> roadkill pizza. <laughs> uh, then we had a book face contest. Is something that I usually do every year. That was a super easy program to have with COVID because um, you just. We have a little sign up that says ask a librarian to take your picture or take your picture and share with us. Um, and then I'll usually uh, hang their pictures up on the teen room wall or um, share on social media or both. Uh, this was an amazing program. I had a friend who comes in the library who make or she's an amazing hula hooper and she actually teaches hula hooping classes at one of our athletic centers here in town. And um, Personally, I met with her and we made hula hoops one day and I'm like, you know what, this would be a really cool library program. Would you be willing to do this? And she said yes. And so we got to make our own hula hoops and it ended up being a generational thing. So it was like parents, it was kids, it was that mid-age group um, and they had a blast. We worked with Ace Hardware in Woodruff and we got um, HDPE tubing at Ace Hardware. And it was funny because when I walked in and I said, I need supplies to make a hula hoop, this like 70 year old man knew exactly what I needed and he helped me out and it was really cool. So you get the tubing, you get um, connectors and then you bring hair dryers to heat up the, the tubing when you put it together. And then if you want, you can decorate with duct tape, which I actually um, bonus, I was blessed by finding like a, Oh gosh, a nonprofit donation through Duck Brand Duct Tape, where they sent me a box of 12 rolls of pattern duct tape. And it was awesome. It was perfect for the program. So kids and or everybody got to make a hula hoop, decorate their hula hoop, and then we had loud music playing and everybody hula hooped after in our community gym. It was amazing. So much fun. We actually had our retired then retired library director come for that program, which was really, which really fun. 
Um, so here's just some more pictures of people decorating. One gal had brought her own yarn, uh, fabric strips that she had to decorate her hoop that she had already made. So that was kind of a cool thing to share. I have a question for you. Yes. So tell me about how you became connected with the donation from the duct tape or duck brand. How yes. do you, you, you talk about donations a lot. So how do you know, maybe this is a question for the end, but tell me about no, that's okay. Yeah. Okay, so for the, the duct tape um, situation, I actually belong to that teen librarians uh, toolbox Facebook group. Mm -hmm. And somebody had mentioned on there at one time that, hey, just so you know, if you're a nonprofit, you can sign up on this duck brand website to get a whole bunch of duct tape. So when I see stuff like that, I do it right away, even if I don't have a need for it, um, just because I'm thinking ahead and I think I know I will use it eventually. Right. Um, so that was that situation. But also um, for what's coming up, my anime club, I have found on the same website, there is a site called crunchyroll.com and they also give libraries free subscriptions to watch anime streaming in the library which is good for licensing as well um which i use for my anime club so there's i i'm just really savvy at looking for <laughs> deals or uh just staying in touch of like finding different things like that i guess yeah, and Erica meant it, mentioned Pinterest. So you guys have your go to places. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. So, of course, with the Stranger Things um, program, it kind of ties into the 80s. Um, it kind of has a lot of that throwback kind of stuff. So, my kids were like, hey, let's have an 80s party. What was it like in the 80s? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so, my daughter had actually had a birthday party that was 80s themed. So again, I used her stuff, um, the glitter background, the blow up boom box, um, the funny glasses were photo props. We played old school board games, which a lot of those kids don't do at home anymore. They don't play board games. So it's kind of a novelty thing when they come to the library. And then we have a good like Twister. That was really fun. I pulled some 80s movies that we could show and I let the kids vote and they chose Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, again, food is a must. So soda, pizza, that kind of stuff. It was, and during our um, games, we listened to 80s music, which a lot of them really hadn't listened to. So that was kind of fun too. Um, this was one of my most favorite uh, programs as well. The kids came to me because there was a time where um, we had the program room just open on Saturdays for a little chunk of time where kids could just come in and hang out. Like we put the bean bags out and they would listen to music and then they could just do whatever they wanted to do. Um, but on one of those occasions, they said, hey, I wish we could wear our pajamas to the library. And I was like, hmm, I wonder how that could happen. <laughs> and so we decided to have a kids story time for teens. So the teens dressed up in their pajamas. They brought their favorite childhood book. Some of them brought stuffies or blankets. Um, and then they read their books around the alphabet rug. Next slide. Um, which Erica let me use along with the parachute. Um, that we played like the story time games. I tapped into Erica's brain for reminders. They played dress up. So I saved a whole bunch of newspapers. And then of course I still had duct tape left over. They created um, designs and then we had like a fashion show along the red carpet that we had had from, I think, a summer reading program previously. Um, so here's just a couple of the kids with their awesome designs. It was, it was a blast. It was so much fun and they could be silly and weird and it just didn't matter. <laughs> uh, so fun. Okay, so then this was a group effort. It was a outreach situation with Manaqua Dance, which is one of our dance companies here in town. Um, the instructor had actually reached out to me and said, hey, could we do something at the library? And I said, absolutely. Um, so she came in with a couple of her high school girls and they dressed up um, in the costumes that they would be wearing for the Nutcracker dance performance. And she read the classic story of the Nutcracker. And then um, afterwards, the girls, the teen girls actually danced with the little girls that were in attendance. So it was, it was kind of neat to see the older and the younger and then the, the parents appreciated it as well. 
uh, Team Garden Club, something that kind of just happened organically. Uh, we had the raised beds out in the garden, um, and I think it was the first year we had it, we had vegetables and lettuce and uh, different stuff in there. So we would have to pick it, and what was happening is Friday would come along, and the staff would be like, oh, I don't want to go outside, it's too hot, or I don't want to get dirty, or whatever. And so, like, hey, teens can do this. So it was kind of like an impromptu thing where if teens were at the library between this time and this time, we would say, hey, do you want to go uh, pick or harvest our vegetables from our reading garden? And they would go outside, they would package it up in little baggies that we had, and then we would set it out on the front desk and um, patrons could take what they wanted. It's kind of cool. Harry Potter party. This was a blast. It was a lot of work, a ton of work, but it was so much fun. Um, I had my husband dress up, the children's librarian at that time had her husband dress up. Um, we created the program room, we, we turned it into like the hall, and it was just a blast. Purple and black and orange were kind of our theme colors. Um, we, we created the houses um, so that each table was a house. So when students or when kids walked in, we had the sorting hat at the top or in the front of the room. And eventually when everybody was seated, we divided everybody up by a house according to the sorting hats so that we knew we had enough kids in each house. And then we played trivia. Um, you can turn to the next slide, I think. When, when they played the trivia game, um, they got to, they would win a prize, but then they would also, it would determine what activity they got to do next. Um, we had, let's see. Oh my goodness. Okay, so I have notes for this one just because we had so much. Um, the tables were houses for trivia, trivia prizes, they determined what they got to do first. And <laughs> treats were the herbology bites. You can, um, we actually made, uh, I'm jumping around here just because I'm so excited. No, that's okay. We, we made wands outside. So we had an outside station where you had dowels and then you would put hot glue on the dowels and then you spray painted the dowels. Right so here. it looked like, yep, it looked like it was an actual wand. Um, we had a potions class. We had, yep. And that was basically vinegar and baking soda, blowing up a balloon. It was a mess, but it was, it was super fun. We had a scavenger hunt. Um, here we have, yep, scavenger hunt. So we had objects that I had laminated, pictures from Harry Potter um, of, and then hidden around the library with clues. So the kids got to find the clues and report back what they had. Um, oh, sorry. Go this way. <laughs> um, again. Okay, so here's a little sampling of the food. <laughs> we had herbology bites. We had treacle tarts. We had cauldron cakes. We had Ollivander's wands. Uh, we had lots of little props just to make things look cool and fancy. <laughs> and here's just a little example. We had the house points that we kept track of on our whiteboard. Um, something that was kind of cool that you can't really get from the photos was we made the floating candles, which I had found on Pinterest. You simply roll up a piece of uh, copy paper around a, a tea light, <laughs> battery operated tea light. And then you hang them along the wall with fishing line. So it, it looked like they were all floating along the sides of the walls. Yeah. <laughs> That's just a prop? Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, more yes. And so here's just a shot of the room. Um, the orange backdrop there, those were the items that were in the scavenger hunt that they would look for so that it was clear what they were looking for. This was our sorting hat, which basically it's funny because I remembered it as a real sorting hat, <laughs> but I think it was actually just a witch's hat. <laughs> Super fun. Okay, so then this was an extension of a book club. So this is an example of how I look at the, what's happening in the community just to see what to do or what kids are doing already to elaborate on it. Um, the Campanile Center of the Arts is just down the street from us and they have a three week children's program every summer. And one of the uh, plays that they were putting on uh, one of the summers was the S Sadako and the Thousand Paper Cranes. And so I had the kids read the book and they all get to keep a copy of the book. And then we had the director from the performance come in along with her helpers to show the kids how to make origami paper cranes. And so she shared a little bit of the history and the meaning and it was just kind of a neat way to elaborate on something that they were already doing. Um, this was the year that we had a ton of 
book ends that were bad. <laughs> so the bottoms, the rubber or the cork board was coming off. And so we were going to just get rid of them. Um, and I said, hey, I can use those. <laughs> and so we had a program where kids came in, they made literary bookends and we just had paint markers. I put tablecloths on the tables, a ton of kids came. It was cool to see older kids and younger kids alike. And they went to town making bookends. Um, this was kind of a steam type thing, uh, edible architecture. We had challenges, uh, miss, most innovative design, tallest structure, the prettiest, most unique, uh, things like that. Kind of fun, messy program. This was another collaboration that we had with our um, a local business downtown called Earth Goods. They're usually known for their pottery, but they also have um, glassware that they work with. So they made sun catchers in this case. And this was part of a summer reading program. I can't remember which one, but it was a fun to do a little field trip. The kids met at the library and then we walked to Earth Goods and had a little outing. Um, this was Kindness Rocks. So we had a whole bunch of rocks that I got from a landscaping company. When I stopped in the office and I said I was from the library and I needed like, I don't know, can't remember how many rocks I took, 30, I think, 50, I can't remember. They just kind of laughed and said, take what you need. <laughs> and so uh, we had a whole bunch of rocks, again, acrylic paint, super easy program. Um, the idea too was to save them or to share them around the community, leave them in special spots. Um, okay, so this was the naturally made program. This is the one that I worked with uh, Alicia Johnson at the Northwoods um, Discovery Center. And she came in and she shared a little bit about essential oils. And then um, we made lip balm, we made body scrub, and we made lotion bars. And the kids had a blast. We've actually done this two or three times. Um, one time, the first time I think it was just teens, and then the mothers of the teens wanted to do it as well. So then the next two times we had it open to everybody, and we had to like make appointments so that we didn't have overflow. Um, and then we also had the high school contact me wanting to do the same thing at like a little uh, craft thing that they had going on in the lunchroom one time as well. So that was kind of neat. Um, this was just a little extension of uh, getting ready for Christmas. It was like after Thanksgiving, we did a little women program where the kids read the book if they wanted to. Um, we offered the graphic, graphic novel as well. Um, and then I brought my grandmother's odd mismatched teacups in with saucers and the kids had tea. I made slump cake, which was the author's um, favorite dessert. And then we made old fashioned Christmas cards and garlands out of popcorn and cranberries. And then we also learned how to do um, some ballroom dances. So that was kind of a fun special activity to get ready for Christmas. Isn't it like right around when the movie, the new movie came it out? It was, it was right around when the new movie came out. So then like the chatter amongst the group was like, we should go watch the movie together. So it was kind of fun. Another way of like looking at what's happening in our community and trying to make it relevant at the library. Um, here was another summer project that we did. We just had a, a plethora of succulents. I think there was an adult program where um, our outreach coordinator had communicated with one of um, the garden centers in town. And so she had like a whole bunch of like flats of succulents available and she had some leftover so i thought hey we have a ton of jars jars i can get some dirt we just had kids put together succulents super fun uh, miss peregrine's party so we read the book um, kids came in we i had found a photo app where you could alter the background i had props that were from dress up uh, activities in the past we pulled everything out i kind of made things look scoopy by uh, or spooky <laughs> by pulling out Halloween stuff as well. Uh, we kind of mimicked the images. If you're familiar with the book, we mimicked the images that are found in the book as best as we could. Um, we also had a craft and that was, I printed off old strange photos and then the kids just used colored pencils, embroidery floss, um, markers, just to make them even a little more odd. <laughs> Here's a couple more pictures from that. Um, this is the most recent success that we've experienced uh, with the Teen Anime Club. Super, super, super fun. Um, basically, the kids just come. I have anime streaming from Crunchyroll, which again, I said is free for libraries. I, every three months, I have to just remind them um, to please renew the free 
account, um, premium accounts, and they will do that. Um, oh, an activity. Uh, so I was in my head, I was thinking, oh, I'm going to have to come up with an anime themed activity each time, something new. And what happened was uh, the first time I had these dollar store picture frames and paint markers and the kids printed off different anime characters or fan art on the, the public computers. And then they traced and uh, painted in their designs. And what happened was the next meeting I had additional activities planned and the kids are like, oh, no, no, no. We just want to do that paint thing every single time. <laughs> so go to the dollar store and get more frames, Jenny. <laughs> so I did that. And that's what they want to do every single time. It's kind of relaxing. Uh, we have anime going. We have pizza. Um, one time for October, it was close to Halloween. So they dressed up. Super fun. Uh, that middle picture is the one of the <laughs> additional projects that I had planned, but they're like, nah, we want to just draw on the glass. So that's what they're doing. <laughs> uh, sampling of teen DIY bags. Uh, this was one that I had done right away. And that was just the little calm jar. We had a donation of all of those um, little yogurt, wee yogurt jars. And so I had twine, we had a big bin of greenery, plastic greenery that on hand, and then I printed off those little circle labels that I found online. That was just an easy little craft that people did. And it was for teens and adults. Um, this was a DIY bag making a winter ice bird feeder, which I tied in with the backyard bird count that was happening. Um, so I provided information to go to that website and then they had a little bag of supplies of bird seed and twine and a little cup that they could make their, their bird feeder. Um, this was super, super easy. Just pieces of cardboard. Um, I printed off the book covers from Harry Potter books and provided a little bit of Mod Podge and they could make Harry Potter ornaments with a little twine. Um, that was super easy. Uh, most recently for Halloween, I think we did this one, jack-o'-lantern pencil holder. Super nice to have my coworkers bring in clean cans. Um, we had a donation of a whole bunch of yarn, so I, I used the yarn and then we had felt for a little face. This was super successful. It was for tweens and teens, but a lot of parents came in or mothers wanting these as well. Um, again, we had the jars, the yogurt jars, tons of ton of them. Um, I printed off little journaling sheets. I printed off little inspirational quotes. I had a little envelope that I made at home. Um, so I made all these little mini envelopes and inside was like a little special message just for them. I had cute decorated colored paper clips. I had little candies inside. Um, I think there were stickers in there as well. And then on the top, we just used a colored muffin cup and some embroidery or, uh, twine, embroidery fuss to tie a little bow. <laughs> And it was, I think it was also during finals week as well. So it was kind of like the kids came in to study and they got a little special something. Um, this one was to make a yarn covered letter initial, super easy again. We had a ton of cardboard, um, again, ton of yarn. What can we do with it? So this was just kind of a fun little room decor thing. Uh, let's see, a couple more examples. We did washi tape notebook and pencils for the beginning or back to school type of project. Uh, galaxy pumpkin, I got a whole bunch of pumpkins from Erica's husband at Save More, the grocery store. Um, and then by the paints and they made little galaxy pumpkins. Um, these were cemeterium <laughs> uh, ghosts in a jar, little crafts. Again, we have a ton of those jars. So I was looking for ways we could use it. The ghost is just um, a little cotton ball on top of a toothpick. You tie a little square of tissue around with a string. Um, I stole a little bit of the cobweb -y stuff that's for decorating for Halloween from our stash of decorations and uh, put it in each jar. And then they cut little confetti construction paper pieces and paint on the outside of the jar. Um, so the Christmas trees are currently what's out. I usually have these bags, some at the front desk, so people can ask, and then I also set them out in the teen room because there are some kids that just don't want to come up and talk to an adult, and that's cool. Um, I have not had any issue with a whole bunch of people taking everything at once, so I offer them in both places. Um, the DIY bag on the right, making a phone holder, was kind of a fun idea I found on Pinterest. Paper, 
I'm sorry, toilet paper rolls, which Erica has a ton of. I said, hey, can I have some? She said, yes. Um, you cover them with washi tape, uh, cut a little rectangular hole in the top big enough to put your phone in, and then you have four thumbtacks for the legs of your holder. Uh, this was a fun little thing. I was not feeling motivated coming off of the adult Christmas themed craft thing. <laughs> Uh, that we had going on. So this was something I found online that I could print and it was a geometric snowman and it was so successful. Like we had dads wanting to take it to have the challenge um, of putting it together, but it's basically paper. It's, it's only paper and you only cut and you create this little geometric head and it's just cute. <laughs> uh, this was the teen and adult crafting joy program. Super, super successful. It was a ton of work. I think we did, for us, it was a ton of work. Just our staff, we were kind of just Jenny. Well, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, um, those little houses were paper and I cut those out at home using my electronic cutter. And then um, we provided paint and we provided like little snow bits. I don't know if you can see it. And then we provided the little um, Christmas tree and the tea light. And so they folded it put it together, painted it, put the snow on. So that was one little craft. Um, another one was the terracotta clay ornaments on the top. So we just provided the clay and the twine, and then they imprinted either like a doily or they used a pencil to create a design or write a name. That was another one. Um, the bottom left is a shower curtain ring. So those plastic shower curtain rings uh, you cover with twine, and then there's a backing of some burlap and I had a whole bunch of chipboard stickers in my stash that I just were Christmas themed and I just cut individual ones out and gave them to everybody. And then there's some red ribbon. Um, the coasters on the bottom right, just pattern paper and a plain coaster and Mod Podge. So that was pretty easy. Um, outreach, outreach, community service hours with the high school. This was something kind of cool that originated from COVID. Um, since we couldn't have kids in the library, um, usually we have kids coming in asking what could they can do or volunteer doing or um, receiving community service hours for their high school graduation. Um, this year I reached out to the teacher that was in charge of that and I said, hey, I, what do you think about having um, like kids provide a book talk or a book haul where they would take a picture of all the books that they, they're reading or that they got at the library? or book reviews. And we could attach like however many hours to each activity would be worthwhile in your eyes um, and mine. And he thought it was amazing, super great. We had four kids participate. Um, I think I'm gonna continue to offer this because it would be fun. It, it's also a way to have teens visible on our social media um, and Facebook and Instagram, whatever. Um, so we had these kids and everybody did book reviews. So they provided pictures with the books and then they wrote um, what they thought about the book and we shared it on social media. It was really cool. All right, summer reading program. I think this year I just shared um, pictures of our signs. <laughs> we had uh, this year, I tried to do something that was virtual, something outside, and then something that was a DIY bag. Um, so these are just a couple examples. We had a photography hike, which is actually really fun. Um, we had everybody bring their cameras or their phones with their camera. And we went on a hike on the Bearskin Trail and I would have challenges like, hey, get down low or get a close up shot or use something with contrast with light and dark, or we had a, I had a printed list. And so that was kind of fun. Um, the teen virtual pet show was kind of a bust. We had nobody attend, <laughs> uh, but that's okay. We offered it. Uh, the teen bring your own book book club was fun. We met outside uh, the Bearskin Trailhead Park uh, people just shared what they were reading. Um, so that was kind of a nice way not to lock anybody out of the program since we couldn't meet in person and talk about the book. Um, Meme Your Pet, I think we had a couple for that. Again, the virtual stuff just isn't, isn't amazing. Um, bad Art Animals, we met at the park, had art supplies. Uh, they could just draw bad art. <laughs> and so that was kind of a stress-free uh, way to participate in something. I think is, is that, that the end? It might be. Oh, yep. Yeah. So I think we're good. Okay.
I <laughs> love, I've always wanted to do bad art. That just sounds awesome. <laughs> like you make your own bad holiday sweater or, you know, stuff like that. I love that. And um, I, I just wanted to mention a few words that I kept hearing over and over were special and visible and safe and place. I just love that, Jenny, that you bring that into all of your, your, your programming planning, you know, make it a little special, make it a little bit more special, make it a little, I kept hearing that. And I just love that. I love yeah. that feeling that, um, that atmosphere that you bring. That's great. Cool. I, there's a comment here that says, I'm bad at art, so I would love that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I never get to see what they made. Yeah. And I, and I, do, I do have a few questions here. Um, they were, the group was wondering, what is the size of your high school and how many people attended like your um, story time for teens and your zombie pub crawls and first of all so those were super cool that they zombie yeah. walked to the library super cool yeah very cool um so those were pre-covid programs and those were very well received i had probably for a period of four years i had a, an amazing group of kids um, amazing following which would range anywhere from for us it was amazing like 15 to 45 oh kids. boy um, like, like 45 would be for the zombie walk or that kind of thing. Right. Um, and then I noticed like after that four year group kind of aged out, I was struggling. So I kind of had like more like seven, nine, 10 kids, sometimes four. Um, and so now after COVID, I'm finally getting with that anime program back up to that 10 number. <laughs> mm. So that's Hey, consistency, man, you know, yeah. um, I, another question is, is about providing some more information about information about things. So more information about the details of your stranger things and your Harry Potter programs, more details about okay. the, the crunchy roll streaming service. Um, so if you can sure. follow up, we can send all that in a beautiful, wonderful package to everybody at the you end. Bet. Yeah, sure. Uh, what else? Oh, I had a question personally. When when they redecorated the bookends, did they keep them themselves or did they stay in the library? So a little bit of both. Um, I had kids that wanted to make more than just, so I let them make two for them mm -hmm. to keep, to take home. And then if they still wanted to create some, I had them decorate some to keep in the teen room. Mm -hmm. And I still have some of those that I can use. <laughs> yeah. You just glue more stuff on the bottom so they don't slide around, right? <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to put out a call while we wrapped up today to everybody. If you found something in this webinar that was so inspiring that you want to try it, I we'd love for you to type that into the chat. Um, I want to do all this stuff just for my own hobbies. Like the meme, your pet sounds amazing to me. We did one for Jenny. It yeah, was really God. fun. Well, think of how many, you know, animal pictures we have on our phone or even of our kids, you know, meme yourself. Oh, that would be fun. Meme yourself. Um, <laughs> oh, that would be bad. <laughs> it would be bad, but it would be great all at the same time. Yeah. Um, just while we're waiting for, for anybody to pop something into the chat here, there's a few things coming in. Do you guys have a favorite program that you would do every day of your life? If you had the chance program you've done in the past. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> a lot of people are saying they want to do the zombie zombie programs, stranger things, no, I, anime yeah, club. Like, for me, I really liked the hula hoop club or the hula hoop um, activity just because it was so free. Like we had music playing and it was just all ages and everybody was just having a blast. Um, and then also I, the scrapbooking program, I could do that like every week mm -hmm. <laughs> just yeah. because that's my own hobby, but that's selfish. <laughs> um, now, I honestly love story time and tap time, which I get to do every week and like like you said, it just with tap time and the music, it's just fun to just jam out with the kids. And like today we danced with candy canes Hello. and like we danced with, I don't know, I just, we danced with bananas one time. 
You can dance with anything. You can dance yeah. with anything. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, just the, the free play that they have afterwards. It's fun to see what they do. Yeah. We have some more things popping into the chat of things they want to try. Definitely hula hoops. The hula hoops made it. Um, getting teens to volunteer in writing book reviews. They said they hadn't even thought of that. What a great idea. Uh, I liked your picture where it had the little thumbs up stuck in the books. That was awesome. Um, other people loved the photography hike. Um, love the laid back idea of the anime activity. Uh, somebody just has a comment that says that they love the enthusiasm that you both shared and that itself is inspiring so that was wonderful and thank you for presenting today and i'm gonna i'm gonna copy that thank you for presenting oh family fortnight made the made the <laughs> comments here i think that was what your first program yeah my that first ever first program. program other than i think i did a crafting program or something but yeah my <laughs> first ever one <laughs> your first big big one yeah. Yeah. Glow in the dark yeah. party made it. Cool. Yeah. And I just want to reiterate that it how brave it is for you guys to present and then take that trip down memory lane and and manage to share that. And you know, a couple of times you guys both said, I'm talking so fast or I'm so excited, I'm <laughs> bouncing around. It doesn't isn't that just like a wonderful feeling to share, you know, to yeah. share with the group and take the leap when I send you an email and say, let's do this, you know? Um, I think we both just genuine, genuinely love our jobs. So that really helps. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's interesting because Erica, you have a young boy and yeah. Jenny, you have a teen. So how awesome is that? Do you have your, your Erica, do you have your boy for story time? And Jenny, do you have your teens come to your teen things? Oh my gosh, we see Zoe all the time. But my <laughs> little guy, unfortunately, um, he goes to daycare thirty minutes away. So, but he's oh. come to one story time. Grandma brought him, and he loved it. He sat there in his um, oh my gosh stroller, and just <laughs> I thought he'd run up to me, but he was just mesmerized. Well, right, <laughs> totally different mom. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I had so much fun today and I can tell you that from the comments, everybody else did too. Um, just want to remind everybody that we are sharing out the presentation so you can get your hands on these pictures. We are going to be sending wrap up information, but Erica and Jenny, I'm sure would love to hear from you directly if you had any questions and their emails will be all over the place too. Um, so sit tight and thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining today. Yeah.